So before we get started, for those that don't know me, I'm Jamie. I am the career program coordinator at Macaulay. I am an alum of CUNY. Uh, I did my master's to do what I'm doing now at Baruch, but my alma mater for undergrad, I went to Northeastern in Boston. Um, I've been with Macaulay, oh my God, has it been three years, Gia? It might be. I have no idea. I feel like you've with, been with me forever in like a positive way. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's, it's, it was a long lost love. Now I interned for Gia for a year when I was in grad school at Baruch. And then I think I've been working now two years full time. So been here for a while and I love it. Um, just so you know, a lot of the references I make will be Macaulay specific, but they're applied to all of CUNY. So if you're not a Macaulay student, that's fine. We love all CUNY. Um, so let's get started. Let me share my screen. Give me one second. Uh, okay. Got the wheel of death. Great. I'm assuming you can't see my screen yet, right? No. No. Oh, can you see it now? Okay. Now. Yeah. All righty. Uh, all righty. I'm going to smoosh this up. All right. So welcome to Enhance Your LinkedIn, LinkedIn 101. I'm super excited to teach and help you guys out with your LinkedIn. So the agenda for today, we're going to do a few introductions, why you should set up a LinkedIn, how to create a strong profile, and how to engage effectively on LinkedIn for jobs and networking and some secret tips. So first, um, if you just want to say, we'll just do a few people um, in the chat. And G, if you could read them out since I can't see the chat anymore. Um, your name, your home campus. And if you're a Macaulay student, if you could say you're a Macaulay student at Baruch or wherever, um, your major, and yes or no, if you have a LinkedIn profile. So if you guys want to just populate that up, we'll just read out maybe three. And if G, if you could read them out. Yeah. So none have come through yet. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right, so as said, uh, she is a Macaulay student at Brute College Accounting, and she has a LinkedIn account. Nice. Anyone else? Myra, she's a Macaulay freshman at Queens. Uh, Joy Ning, Macaulay at John Jay. Uh, international criminal justice. She has a LinkedIn. Uh, John, his home campus is City. He's a Macaulay student, CS major, and he has a LinkedIn account that needs some TLC. Uh, Myra said she just made an account for us. Hey! <laughs> Samiha says she's Macaulay at CCNY, environmental engineering. And yes, she has a LinkedIn account. Uh, Fatima, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, or Fatima, uh, ha is from Macaulay at Brooklyn. She's a biology major and she has a LinkedIn, but there's nothing on it yet, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, for Zana, she's Brooklyn College alum and she does have a LinkedIn account. Uh, Rachel, she says she's Macaulay at Queens Communication Sciences and Disorders. Uh, she just made an account. And Jantal, uh, she's Macaulay at Brooklyn, biology major. And yes, she has a LinkedIn account. Woo woo, awesome guys. Thank you so much. Love learning about you guys. So I would love you guys to, for this portion actually, unmute yourself. And if anyone wants to just say, if they could name three similarities or three differences um, on, or one, whatever you're comfortable with, what's the difference between resume and a LinkedIn? Anyone just unmute themselves? Uh, I would say like difference is mainly just that a resume, you, you send it specifically to a certain company, but LinkedIn is you use it for connections. So you can let, kind of utilize the people around you that you know, or people who have similar um, interests or kind of like the same, uh, I guess the like credentials. And you'll kind of like um, be able to spread your own like, uh, your like knowledge of your skills um, and like use that as a network. Cool. Yeah. Great answer. Anyone else? So for Zana said um, in the chat that LinkedIn is better. It links you your personality and networking with your resume. Cool. I like it. Anyone else? We'll do one more.
anyone? LinkedIn is more like um like, like a social media than resumes. Since resumes, you just tailor it and you can't really like do anything to it except explain it to um the the in- interviewers. But for LinkedIn, you could like posts, you could um, make posts, and just show that your um what your progress is, what things are most important to you, and then you could possibly talk about in the interview. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. So some of the points you uh, mentioned were spot on. I'm just going to list some others. So let's talk about similarities first. So both in a resume and LinkedIn, you're going to list relevant experience. Oftentimes you'll probably see people on their LinkedIn kind of just list what their job is and the company, but not the bullets. I don't recommend really doing that because every company and every role is really different just because let's say you're a career program coordinator. Um, Some people like in my position, maybe only do events where I do everything from counseling to events to employer relations. So it's really important to show on LinkedIn and obviously your resume, like what you actually do in that position because then people get a better idea of the skill sets you have. Um, In both resumes and LinkedIn, you really want to include keywords. And often I get, well, how do I know what the keywords are? Usually in the industry, there's buzzwords. Um, and you want to try and incorporate it as much as you can. Obviously don't lie about something that you don't have the skill in, but if you do try to implement the words that are commonly used, um, and then the quantifying the bullets. So as I mentioned, it's important to have bullets in both, um, and numbers always pop. So for example, if you were applying, I don't know, for a social media position, it'd be really good to say, you know, increased, um, followers on, I don't know, LinkedIn's Instagram account by 25% by engaging um, professional influencers, something like that. Um, And then in terms of resumes, so with resumes, you can actually have more than one, right? There's no like resume police. Um, So if you're interested, I made this example earlier when Gia presented this morning, um, you could maybe be interested in education and music. You're allowed to have two different resumes, but you're not going to have two LinkedIn profiles. So in LinkedIn, it's important to emphasize all of your interests, but at the same time, you don't want to seem like you're all over the place. So truly try to identify and narrow down as much as possible. Um, So for a resume, the rule of thumb is for every 10 years, you only get one page, which it's hard, right? Your resume is the living document. People get sentimental about certain experiences. Maybe they did five years ago, but it really isn't relevant anymore. Um, Or LinkedIn, oh my God, I have stuff from my freshman year of college. Like when I worked retail at J. Crew, like a hundred years ago, I just like having it there. It's honestly for my memory and people are curious if I have retail experience, um, they can check that out. Um, but it's kind of like a log of everything I've done and you can do the same with your LinkedIn. So you never have to give up anything. Um, resumes don't put your picture on unless they weirdly ask, which they shouldn't. Um, but almost if you don't have a picture on your LinkedIn, it's kind of weird. It's like, are they trying to catfish you, which no one wants to be catfished. Um, so always have a picture um, on LinkedIn um, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, a resume is like a physical tangible document. Yes, in the world we're living in, everything gets emailed. Um, but when you do go for an interview in person, when the world reopens, you should always have copies of your resume to hand out. Even if you've emailed them your resume, like always have extra copies. And LinkedIn, you wouldn't hand them your LinkedIn profile, that would just be weird. Um, but what's cool about LinkedIn that makes it more, uh, dimensional is that you can add media. So for example, maybe you wrote, we have a career blog, right? Maybe you published an article on our blog and you can link the blog to your LinkedIn. So it makes it super easy for someone checking out your profile to just click that link, um, and see your writing skills. So that's pretty cool. Any questions? Jamie, you could include your LinkedIn URL on your resume. Yep. I, that's going to get on there. I promise we'll get to it. Um, but was there any questions? No, no questions right now. Okay, cool. You'll just tell me. <laughs> okay. So why, why set up a LinkedIn profile? So there's over 500 million people on there, over 9 million companies, over 10 million active job postings. And 50% of employers said that they're less likely to hire a candidate that they couldn't find on LinkedIn. So you, it's funny, you want to, you do just want to have a presence there, right? And someone else mentioned earlier, it is a social media platform, but it's your professional self, right? So things you wouldn't put on Facebook or Instagram, you probably won't put on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is like, if your grandma was to look at it, she'd be very proud. 
Um, you can develop a professional brand, highlight your soft skills and your hard skills. Um, so to clarify what that means for those that may not know, hard skill would be like learning a language, let's say, or have knowing you speak Hebrew fluently is like a hard skill where a soft skill would be like leadership organization um, and really highlighting those skills on LinkedIn is a really great thing. So people can know that and be like, oh, this person's the go-to in that. Um, additionally, industry trends, this is so, so important. Um, so for example, let's say you're really interested in um, social media marketing, right? There's so many new tools that are popping up like TikTok really blew up. I feel like during COVID or maybe I'm old and I just didn't know it was happening before. Um, but there's definitely like groups and channels and companies and those companies use LinkedIn as like their Instagram and anytime they do something new or cool, they post it up usually on their LinkedIn. And a common question I get is how am I supposed to do research on a company? I go on their website, but a lot of their stuff's fairly like boiler template. Um, but LinkedIn's a really great place because they're advertising their best accomplishments, attributes, new hires. Um, that's usually one of the first places they'll post any new job openings. Um, so that's a really great place to check out. And so you can just follow a company like you would follow something on LinkedIn, um, on LinkedIn, on Instagram or Facebook. So maybe we have a question. Oh, is yeah, sorry. Is it appropriate to mention high school experiences slash activities on a resume? Uh, I've seen people do so for LinkedIn. Cool. So LinkedIn, let me start with resume, sorry. Resumes, it depends. So if you're a freshman, right, you haven't been in college for that long. So our general rule of thumb is if you're a sophomore, sure, it's time to take off high school stuff because hopefully by then you would have, you know, maybe had some academic experience like projects. Um, maybe you joined some clubs. Um, you could talk about um, papers or relevant coursework. Um, in terms of LinkedIn, you can really do whatever you want in terms of high school. Like maybe you were the president of your class. Um, but I mean, I personally don't have anything from my high school on my LinkedIn. The only thing I maybe have, which I'm not even sure is my high school listed just because of the networking piece, because then I can connect with people from my high school saying, hey, I saw you're working at blah, blah, blah. I'd love to connect you with Macaulay students, let's say. Um, does that answer your question? I'm going to take that as a yes. Yep. <laughs> okay, next. So we want to create a LinkedIn profile that has this kind of reaction like, oh my God, because there is a lot of profiles out there, right? Like I mentioned. So you really want to make one that pops. Um, so if everyone should have gotten an email from Janet talking about um, one, getting up, making a profile for this, just so you have something to start with, as well as a checklist. And these were the different ones. So we have our photo, our headline, our summary, experience, organizations, et cetera. And we're gonna go through all of these. Um, just wanna make sure, did you guys get that email? Can you just write in the chat and Gio will let me know? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Cool. A lot of <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, cause if you didn't, I would send it. Okay, nice. Um, so let's start with a little quiz. Um, again, let's put it in the chat. Good versus bad profile pictures. Tell me which one is the good picture. Is it number one or number two? Two, two, <laughs> everyone is saying two. Okay. Can one uh, of the people, the sorry, question. go ahead. She's, uh, Fatima was saying, I guess my question more specifically was that although I hear often that you shouldn't have high school stuff on your resume, but I still feel like some relevant things that align with your career goals may be helpful, like volunteering activities, internships. Um, I, I, if I can take the opportunity to answer that, um, most employers really see the start of your collegiate career as a brand new slate. Um, so although, you know, I, I would say like, you know, alma maters, like educational uh, institutions or schools, that's, you know, perfectly okay to include both on LinkedIn and, and, a, and on a resume in some cases, although I'm very hesitant to say that for a resume. Um, the overall sense is that once you begin your collegiate career, you're really supposed to be, you know, kind of gaining experience. Um, 
you know, basically gaining experience in, in that area starting then. They see that as the starting point and not anything before that. Awesome. Um, so one of the people, again, I can't see the chat. Can someone that said uh, number two, can they say why they think number two is the better picture compared to number one? Okay, so I'm gonna pick someone. I'm okay, gonna say, um, Joy, if you can unmute yourself, say why, oh, why you chose two? Did I do yeah, uh, so I chose two because it's like the more professional looking one in the first photo. You can kind of see that he's like bending over and there's a like, the like a, a part of it is um, like you can see another person in it. So obviously it wasn't like a very uh, professional photo. And in general, just the posture is better for the second photo. Nice, yeah. Also, it's really good to have a neutral background, kind of with the guy, random guy's arm, um, right? Because the girl, the woman on the left, her posture, as you mentioned, is professional. It's really easy to see her face where even the lighting in picture one is kind of off. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You want to be by yourself in this picture um, and showcase a professional demeanor. All right. Next one, which one is good or bad? So if you can put in the number or numbers of good ones and bad ones, let's start with which ones, which one or ones do you think are good? Put in the numbers. Two and three, two, three is good, two is okay. Cool. Three. Do you guys want to call on someone to explain why they think whatever they said? Sure. Okay. I'm going to call on Agnes. She said three is okay, two is good. Yes. Um, I would say three is okay because the lighting is good and um, it's a neutral background. For two, I might change my answer because um, like, like the guy is wearing a white shirt and is blending into the background. And... Um, I guess having a, just a blank, uh, blank white background is not that good either. Mm -hmm. So the answer was three is the best and that's Gia. Um, and then two was good, exactly what you said. I think there's this misconception that as long as it's a plain background, it's good, but he kind of blurs in, right? And it almost looks like he's like just ahead. <laughs> Um, where if he had maybe a blue background or kind of what Gia has a blurred background, he would have popped more. So he has the professional shirt, he's smiling, he looks approachable, but if he had a, like a contrasting background, that would definitely benefit him. Three of Gia is perfect. She's smiling, great background, great posture. Number one, this person looks like maybe she's not ready for a job. She's a little sad and uh, that probably shouldn't be her first impression in the professional sphere. All righty, we have one, I think this is our last one. So which one is good or bad? Three is good. I like three the best. I like all three, I'd avoid two though. One and three are good, two is okay. All good, three is best. Two looks like a passport pick. <laughs> All right, does someone want to explain their answer? And close, not centered. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, for, for number three, uh, she's centered. Um, there's a neutral background, she's smiling. Um, for number two, I wasn't sure because I'm not sure if he's actually like looking directly at the camera. Um, and then number one is just not looking at all at the camera. Mm -hmm. So I personally would actually say these are all pretty good. I agree. Number three is probably the best. I would say it goes three, one, two, um, just because the second one, he's just a little too close. Like it just feels like he's like in my face. <laughs> Um, where three feels very professional, one feels approachable. Um, and they both, one and three have the blurry backgrounds. And I just find that white as a background, it doesn't feel warm. It just kind of feels harsh, if that makes sense. Um, so just think about that. Um, when you're doing a picture, um, you can really just get a friend of yours to take a picture on your iPhone. I think a cool one would be like a bread brick or trees, kind of like what they've done. 
Um, chest up is best for a pick. Yep, absolutely. All right, so the next part of that checklist, the headline. So this is what I like to call the most valuable real estate on your resume. So when you're looking at a LinkedIn, um, you'll see it's their picture and then the line right below the picture. And even when you're searching for a name, so for example, if you typed in my name, um, before even clicking on my name, you'll see my headline next to it. Um, so it's really important to highlight your strengths. I also think it's nice to kind of add some personality to it. So for example, mine, I think says career educator, um, dog enthusiast and food lover, because I love food and dogs. Um, and I love helping people explore their careers. So as obviously I'm not looking for a job, but if I was, I'd probably change that more to my soft and hard skills of how I can apply those skills to whatever job I'm hoping to get. Um, and since a lot of you are undergraduate, um, you can also put when you're going to graduate. If you've graduated recently, you could say class of 2020. Um, but it's just really good to um, showcase those skills. So here are some examples. So the first one is computer science major, political blogger. So I'm seeing, okay, so this person's interested in tech, but also interested in politics, human rights, aspiring mobile app developer. So if I saw this, like, I think as a recruiter, like maybe this person maybe wants to do IT at a law firm or a nonprofit and they would be really well suited, right? Because I'm learning about both their skills and their interests. Um, the second one, this person's interested in fashion. They're a really good connector. So just looking at this, I think, okay, this person is probably extroverted and a good communicator and they're fit and they're interested in sports. And usually people that are into sports are usually really good team players as well and work well with people. Um, and then the last one really is highlighting the hard skills, um, as well as if they're interested in looking for some position. So this person is a software development student. They're seeking a full-time job. Um, these are their um, languages that they're comfortable with. And then this is when they graduated. So these are just some examples. Um, and don't worry about taking notes. We can send this um, out to all of you guys so you can have this as an example. Okay. Summarize in the summary. So, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, absolutely, go ahead. Uh, Myra says, okay, but how do we get those nice straight lines? <laughs> uh, uh, so I said shift backslash. <laughs> yeah, if you have, uh, I don't know if it's different on a, a Microsoft computer, but if you look at your keyboard and you see the delete button on the top right, it's the button below. And if you hit shift, it's that line break. It's, I call it a line break. Um, so that's where it is. I hope that helped. Yeah, it did. Cool. Uh, one second. Uh, is the key above the enter on a PC? Yes, it is. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? No, not okay. for now. Summarizing in the summary. So this, you don't have to do a summary. I say, why not? It's there. Um, I think this is especially good for um, anyone that maybe has multiple interests or maybe for those that maybe graduated, maybe you were a comm major, but now you wanna be a teacher and explaining that. So for example, I was doing events and marketing and now I'm in career counseling, which are totally different. So in my summary, I kind of talk about that. Um, so it only shows the first three lines before someone clicks see more. So definitely be sure to have something catchy to make them say, hmm, I wanna read more about this. So I would write it out like on a Google doc or a word just to count how many characters you have so that you make sure that whatever is first really pops and is seen. Um, so summarizing the summary, the second part. Um, so it can be written either in the first or third. I recommend first, especially as a student. Um, you can do a bunch of different things. You could either just have a straight up paragraph. You can use a combination of bullets. Um, you can use all caps. Um, whatever you think will catch their eye quickly and is digestible, I think using a combination of the two is really good. Um, and I always suggest if you're kind of stuck, either look for someone in your industry um, or someone you admire. So I love Oprah, I mean, she's queen. Um, so she's a great example, but if you admire, whether it's a celebrity or a tech entrepreneur like Elon Musk, just to get some inspiration, or you can always check mine out. Um, not that I'm anyone's hero, but <laughs> 
just as if you need an accessible example. So I've created two examples. Um, so just so you know, in general, you're only allowed to have up to 2000 characters, but you really shouldn't use that many. Like that's just way too long. Um, so I'm gonna just quickly read these out loud. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. So the first one is from the perspective of a Macaulay student. As a current Macaulay Honors College and Baruch College student, I've utilized my education and skills to learn more about environmental science and volunteer with preventative climate change organizations. Concurrently, I've spent three years managing the Macaulay Science Club's social media accounts to further spread awareness of our mission and recruit new members. Now that information could be in their LinkedIn, right? But just having those, what, two sentences, three sentences, like I learned so much about this person and their real passion for the environment. Um, and I think the second one might be mine. Uh, my path to career counseling was inspired by my experience of career, career exploration. Given my experience exploring my own professional path, these moments have provided me with the skill sets to understand, empathize, and assist students to construct concrete trajectories to execute their goals. Oh, this is me. I have joined Macaulay Honors College full time this summer, and I'm excited to connect with students, alums, and employers that want to meet Macaulay College, Honors College students. This was my old summary. Um, so again, Career counseling is a very niche um, position and I'm explaining why I think I'm a good fit and what my skills are. Um, any questions about the summary? No? Okay. Yeah. So another thing you can add in your summary is a call to action. Um, this is a really great thing, especially if you're like a freelancer, maybe you want to like make money on the side, whether it's um, freelancing social media or freelance web development or virtual assistant or anything like that. Call to actions are a really great way to pop. Um, so this is an example. If you want stellar copy that moves leads through your uh, funnel, get in touch, send me an email or email at macaulay.student, whatever email. I'm always open to chat about potential contracts, interesting projects, writing in general, when at all possible mountain biking. So this is an example. It shows his interests as well as his skill sets. Um, I personally would not put your Macaulay student email. I just use that as an example. You could even make a new email for this kind of thing um, just because you don't want to get spammed. Um, but at least if it's like a random email, it doesn't matter. Um, and then in mail just means being DM'd. Um, but the problem with that is if you're not premium, then they can't send you a long message. So I always think an email is really a nice thing to have. Uh, what is a call to action? Can you explain it a little bit more? Sure. So a good example would be like, uh, you know, when you go on a website and it'll say like, put your email here for 15% off or whatever, that's a call to action, right? They're calling you to sign up for something and in return, you get this. This kind of call to action is like, check me out. Here's how you can access me. And then short firm, like it's, it's getting that person reading it to take action on it, basically, is probably the best way actually to describe it. Does that make or sense? Or to contact you for services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a question, Jamie. She said, thank you. Um, so Rachel asks, would you advise against making a LinkedIn with your Macaulay email? The only reason I say that is just like, I mean, it depends, right? Some people are comfortable with it and that's fine. And it says, you know, on your LinkedIn already that you're a Macaulay student. So it's kind of a given, but it's really up to you. Personally, I would make a new email just for that. Like you could call it, let's say it was mine. I could say, jamie.rudin at gmail because they clearly already know my name it's just a, a, I don't know that's just my it's a really a personal preference thing over anything else I wouldn't make your email address like your address <laughs> right you don't want to expose too much information um, but that's just really a personal opinion I, I mean in order to sign up for LinkedIn I would say whatever whatever it is that is you know, if you sign up for noti notifications on LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you're going to get those notifications. If a recruiter reaches out for something or if you're, you know, jobs area, uh, just use the email that is best for you. I think what Jamie was talking about was more so don't put the email in the call to action in that summary. Um, something that is, uh, you know, something that you usually use, just create a different email address for that because a lot of folks just go on LinkedIn to find, I mean, the, these are bots, right? That go searching for these email addresses and then they end up spamming you for it. So I think 
if I'm correct, Jamie, what she was mentioning was more so in that summary, maybe not put, you know, some sort of personal email use or a school email, use some other email that you create specifically for LinkedIn to place in that specific summary section. Exactly. Um, we have a couple more questions, Jamie. Sure. Uh, let me see if I could. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Can you put your regular email? Is that a bad idea? I already have too many emails. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. G, I, yeah. I think Gia answered the question beautifully, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. And should the summary be more than one paragraph? Say that again. I'm sorry. Should the summary be more than one paragraph? It can. Um, again, just think about when you visit other people's profiles and how many are you really going to read? Um, that's why if you, if anyone wants to check out mine, it's just Jamie Rudin. Um, I think if my memory serves me right, mine is a paragraph or two. And then I also put my specialties, like my skill sets in a bullet form. Um, we'll talk more about the keyword piece to LinkedIn. Um, but I always just find bullets are so easy to read. Um, so it's, I like the hybrid version best, but again, it's up to you. No other questions. Cool. Keywords, here we go, we're right here. Um, so when you're a recruiter, you actually, if the company pays for it, you can get a different version of LinkedIn. Like their LinkedIn looks different than yours um, in that they can search for people with keywords and titles and things like that. Um, so again, they're really nitpicky and I really would take a look in different job descriptions that you find to see what's more common within the terminology of that industry. So literally like things as similar as uh, Java development versus Java developer will be come out different. So you might want to put both in um, just so you're kind of opening up the wideness of the search, if that makes sense. Um, and where should those keywords be? The headline, which I mentioned earlier, the position titles. Um, a lot of the time, I see on resumes, especially someone will just write intern or volunteer. And I always ask, well, what flavor intern or what flavor volunteer? Even though you weren't given that title per se, it's really helpful for the person um, that's reading your LinkedIn or resume um, to better identify what your tasks were. So for example, if you were an intern and you kind of just did the like office stuff, you could write administrative office intern and it just helps the reader better comprehend what they're about to read. Um, and I would do the same thing on your LinkedIn. Um, we talked about the summary, experience descriptions is just the bullets, projects, describing what you did in this project, how you accomplished it, what it looked like, certifications and publications. Um, Cool. Any questions on that? And don't yeah, go forward like Titanic. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I have a question. Um, sure. So oh, hi, Marie. Hi. So, are you supposed to? You're supposed to update your your LinkedIn like as it's going, or can you? Can what I? Mean, as it's going. What I've already done. Huh? What do you mean as it's going? Like I have like. Um, the thing you were just talking about, sorry, I'm like all over the place. I just forgot what you just said, but it was something you just talked about that made me think like, oh, maybe I should post about, oh, it was administrative intern you're talking about. Okay. And I was that like, I guess like a year ago or, or some, and like, I don't know where, where would I post that exactly? I don't so know. let's say like, as an example, were you like an admin assistant, like at a dentist office or something like that? Um, it was at um north central hospital okay so i mean whether it was experience like you were paid or if it was volunteer it doesn't honestly matter um you can just put it under experience and then say you know administrative intern or whatever it was at x hospital um and then put your responsibilities there and when you put the dates in for when you were linkedin will automatically place it in the appropriate spot within the timeline of your other positions Okay, so it's not like an actual post you're making. It's just under the experience part. Mm -hmm, exactly, a post. Um, so if anyone's wondering what Marie means by post versus your LinkedIn. So your LinkedIn profile is literally like a virtual resume that is a little bit more dimensional in that you can have clickable links like a media post, like let's say you publish something somewhere else or a video you took or a portfolio. Um, but for example, you can post like, 
repost articles, um, write an article on LinkedIn, which is great. Um, I repost a bunch all the time and I'll talk more about that. Um, but yeah, so to answer your question, you can just put it in your profile like you would in your resume. Thank you. Yeah. Any others? No. Cool. So recap. So you got to think about who is your audience, right? Who are you trying to attract to your profile? It's usually someone that's a recruiter, right? Or someone in your business maybe that you want to talk to. So really try to think about if you were them and in their shoes, what would give them that wow factor we talked about? What would give that pizzazz that they'd be like, I want to talk to this person. Um, I know for me, for example, if I was looking for someone, I'm just making this up, let's say to intern in our office that wasn't a Macaulay student, I would really look for someone in their headline to say like career, like assessment obsessed, um, love networking, connecting people, right? Because even though that's not a hard skill, it tells me a lot about that person and their innate passion for that. Um, and then using the headline to you know, broadcast the ideal candidate. So there was the coding boot camper and the aspiring software engineer. So even if you're like, um, not at a certain level, you can say what your hope and dreams are. And maybe then you'll find that intern to help make those dreams come to fruition. Um, again, use the summary to showcase your passion for said industry or topic. Um, your experience section should show your relevant experience. Um, again, you can have old experience there, um, but you don't need to. It's really a preference thing. Um, and then the keywords, remember, go to job descriptions or other profiles of people that are in the same industry and use those. Don't copy and paste their like whole sentence. Just take the keywords and include it into yours. Uh, Jamie, we have a question. How do you know who your audience is? Well, couldn't I, I, I'd be easier for me to answer that question. Can the person who asked that um, tell me, for an example, what industry they're interested in? Hello, you there? <laughs> All right, well- I put, uh, I put it in the chat, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, um, what industry are you interested in? I'm an English major, but I'm on the pre-med track, but I'm only in my, in my second semester. So I'm not even sure what like I'm trying to attract right now. Right, exactly. So because you're a bit younger, right? You're not really looking for a full-time job. My advice is to, I mean, anyone, everyone should be doing this, but especially in your position, you should be using LinkedIn to network um, and meet people that are either maybe a doctor or, a, you know, maybe work administratively in a hospital, right, within the medical space, or if English, I don't know if you're interested in education, um, doing something like that, um, then you could also reach out to teachers, right? So, just think if you were a teacher or a doctor or something like what would they want to see on your profile, right? So maybe your headline would be something like aspiring doctor with a passion for education, right? So just trying to be in their shoes. And I tell the same thing to my students when they're writing their cover letter, like you got to think, I want the person on the other end of this to be like, wow, this is so good and totally relates to my interest of hiring that person. Does that make sense? Um, how do we network with like people who we don't know? Like what would they, why would they want to connect to me? Great as... question. I'm going to get to that later. So I promise okay. I'll hit on that. Thank you. Yeah. Any other if I, if I could piggyback off of that, it's really, you know, when we say who is your audience, it's who would you like to connect with? What is, what is your ask? You know, even if you're a freshman, I mean, are you looking for possible internships, community service, volunteer opportunities? Do you want to learn a little bit more about maybe, let's say, for example, what the difference is between an internist and, and a public health per person, you know, uh, that kind of position would be. So you really want to understand, you know, LinkedIn is a networking tool. So who would you like to connect to and who do you want to find you? Um, so I think that kind of helps bring that in some sort of direction. But as a freshman, you know, that's really a hard question to answer. Um, I think for the immediate, you really want to do what Jamie was saying and like, who would you like to connect with and who would you like to network with? 
Um, Jamie, we also have another question. Should we make our profile public or make it only visible to connections and networks? Great question. So it so depends. Um, I have students or not students, they're alums um, that are in a full-time job and they want to leave and they want to network and they're nervous that their employer will see that they're active and like, you know, updating their profile and stuff like that. So for those people who are nervous, it's different, right? Because they got to be a little careful if they're nervous, their boss will get upset. Um, so if you're in that position, I don't know if you're a student who asked the question, um, if you're an alum in a full-time job, you might want to be a little bit more careful and I'll talk about that as well later. Um, but in terms, if you're a student, I say, why limit yourself? Um, you will get spammy messages. I'm almost going to guarantee it because everyone gets them. Um, and sometimes those messages won't be spammy and there'll be genuine people wanting to reach out to you and learn more about you and your experience because your LinkedIn profile is going to be amazing after this. Um, so again, it's up to you and what you're comfortable with. I say, if you're a student and you're not in a full-time job, why limit yourself? If you're in a full-time job and you're nervous, then you might want to close it off. But again, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Thank you. Questions. Yeah. Any other questions? No other questions. Okay. So I mentioned earlier about how LinkedIn differentiates from a resume because you'll have media. So this is actually a friend of mine who works in PR at this company called Seven Rooms. It's basically like a uh, like an open table. Um, and she does the PR for them and brand marketing. And the links here that you see, I put this little red box that's not normally there. <laughs> Um, are press releases and articles that she got for the company. So if she ever decided to leave this company, they could be like, wow, okay, she has connections with this you know, publication or her writing is really great or look how much exposure. I mean, that's a lot of links, right? 25 plus. So um, this is just a really great thing to do. I tell um, Gia's and my interns who we have them write blogs for the career blog, which you should check out. Um, and it's open to any Macaulay student to write. Uh, that they should always include the blogs that get published um, on the website there so that people who um, look at their profile can see their writing skills because surprisingly writing is a really valuable skill today um, still. So it's really just good to showcase your um, publications. Um, you can do that for GitHub, for tech kids. Um, if you're a graphic designer, you can show your portfolio. I mean, there's just so many things you can do and it can be both links, it could be PDFs, it can be like a YouTube link, it really runs the gambit. We have another question. Oh. Uh, they, should I be connecting with everyone in Macaulay uh, with me? Because that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Good. Yes. And I don't want to answer your question because I'm going to get to it. But short answer, yes. But we'll, I'll touch on that, I promise. You guys are so ahead of the game. I'm loving it. Um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna again, open the floor. Um, I'd love if someone in the either can chat it to Gia or if they wanna unmute themselves. When I say be active on LinkedIn, what do you think I mean by that? I'm thinking, um, I guess constantly update your LinkedIn profile whenever you have like a new job or a new internship. Mm -hmm. And if you have um, connections like with your friends or with um, connections with uh, professionals, you could follow their activity, uh, comment on their posts. So you show that they're, you're interested in um, what they're interested in and then you could gain more connections that way. Totally. So you do have to think like as a student, your life in a weird, it's gonna sound weird, is more active in the professional sense than someone like me, right? Because I've been in the same job for a couple of years. So my activity in terms of my profile probably won't change too much. But a student, you might have a new internship every semester. So definitely. Um, does anyone else want to take a guess? Uh, at, so uh, first, day? First, don't be a creeper. Engage with people's posts. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. I like. It. It's funny. I actually tell people that like, if you're going to be a creep on any social media platform, like LinkedIn's the one that like allows you to like be like a creep in a good way, like creep away. <laughs> Someone else said, "Can you use LinkedIn to apply for positions, or is it just to display info about yourself?" So sorry. Was the question? Um, it just cut uh, out so basically, can you 
sorry, can you use LinkedIn to apply for positions or is it just to display info about yourself? Both. So LinkedIn, honestly, it's, I really should be calling them because I talk about LinkedIn so much. They should like sponsor me. Um, it's such a great platform for so many different reasons. So um, there's jobs you can find there. Um, you can connect with people there. There's workshops there that are free, which I shared. I can share the link again here. Um, if you have a New York Public Library card, LinkedIn has um, purchased from this company called Linda courses. Um, and you can take those and add them to your LinkedIn profile. They're like little badges, like certificates um, to showcase that you completed the course. Um, they also do like professional news articles and there's just so much you can do. So to answer your question, yeah, you can do both. Um, um, how do you edit your page without notifying others? I think other people get a notification when you edit your profile, question mark. So there is, when you're posting, um, or editing a job of, that you have, like your experience, it really has a little button at the bottom that says notify your network and you just want to turn it off. Um, so someone else asked, where do you find those courses at anywhere on LinkedIn? Uh, I think you're referring to the LinkedIn courses or the, or the Linda courses. Yeah. Um, gee, if you don't mind, if you just Google NYPL and then Linda L-Y-N-D-A, it'll populate that link if you can throw it in the chat. Oops. Thank you. Were there other questions? Yeah. No. I have some oh, go ahead. <laughs> it was kind of about the whole, when you post something you get notified or someone else gets notified where did you say that was again so if you for example posted um if you posted sorry my dog is like pulling on my sweater um if you post it a new job and you didn't want your current employer to see it when you're posting it like on your profile there's a button and it's at the bottom of where you're posting it and it says notify your network and it's like a slidey button and you just want to make sure it's turned off Okay, and also, uh, you guys are talking about like being a creeper, but like, can, can when you press someone else's profile, doesn't it? Don't you get a message that says, "Oh, this person looked at your profile." Yeah. And they're checking you out, like, isn't that like you're still being a creeper? <laughs> so one, it doesn't happen all the time. It actually is more so if they have premium, right? Then they'll definitely see that you're creeping because they're paying for that satisfaction. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Um, but honestly, it's so funny. Like I like, it's going to sound weird. And I know most employers will agree with this. They like that you go to their profile because it says you're doing your homework, right? Like before an interview, if you know who you're interviewing with, you should totally creep on their LinkedIn. A really great example was before, um, I got the pleasure to work with Gia. I applied to work at, um, where was it? Yeshiva, um, at Cardozo Law School. And uh, one of the women I knew I was interviewing with went, I did a master's before Baruch abroad. Um, and I noticed that she went there for undergrad. And so when we first started talking, I brought it up and I was like, oh, by the way, I saw on your LinkedIn that you went to blah, blah school. She goes, yeah, how do you know? And I was like, well, I went there too. And I honestly think because of that, I made it really far in the interview process because we had something in common to talk about. And I don't know, when someone's from your same school, you kind of have this like agreement that you're both kind of normal. <laughs> um, so yeah, I say creep away. Like when people click on my profile and if I can see that they saw it, I typically then also visit theirs. And then that's just an easy way of getting noticed, right? Um, it's not like if you were Instagram stalking your ex-boyfriend, you wouldn't want them to see that you visited their profile five times because that's just, you don't want that. But LinkedIn, it's different. And, um, oh, I can't see it. And uh, Farzano made a really good comment. She said she spoke with someone in HR at Northwell recently, and she said to avoid the jobs listed on LinkedIn because they are so competitive, um, in parentheses, so easy to apply and cost more for the job post. So only big mm -hmm. companies that can afford it post them generally. Mm -hmm. So if your job hunting for jobs, stick to the career for portal for a company or indeed, if I can take this one, I think you have to have a multiple approach, right? Um, so from the last one that we were talking about the job search strategies, I think you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the, the most, uh, uh, the biggest chance. Um, with Northwell Health, I would 
suggest applying directly on the Northwell Health uh, website, right? Because that's directly with them, um, you know, and it is true that not everyone is going to be posting on LinkedIn jobs, but with the more, uh, with the larger companies, I have heard uh, some positive reviews in terms of people applying for them and then getting the jobs there. So I think it also, you know, depends on how much you're optimizing um, your, your LinkedIn profile. That was a really good answer. Um, like Gia said, I think, I, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, job searching, I think has this, uh, bad rep that job search means I apply online. I did my homework. I I'm done. But honestly, and Gia talked, oh, Gia talked about this in her last, um, session, applying online for a job is actually probably the worst way to get a job. The best way to get a job is either through a referral or from networking, um, which again, I will talk about. Um, so you probably, for those that have applied online, probably heard maybe back from one or two because um, you are just a resume in the pile. Um, but if you know someone who can advocate for you, that's totally different. So for example, if I got, I'm just making this up, 100 applicants for our internship program, but out of one of those 100, um, they were, you know, one of maybe Gia's sister's cousin's friend, and Gia said, oh, you should check out Sarah, like, she's great, no, 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 I'm going to pay extra attention to Sarah over those 100, so just by that one comment, and I think Marie Elise, like, Gia and I have, like, you know, worked with Marie, she was our intern 100 years ago, um, <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> it's Marie what? Claire. It's oh, Marie, Marie Claire, sorry. Um, but yeah, so no we, sorry, we've, your sister, um, we've had, in, we've had in the past, um, and you know, we would help with her because we could speak to her experience. So it's always good to have someone advocate for you. Um, so Farzana said, uh, different than someone posting a status saying they're hiring. I'm talking about the actual listed jobs from companies. I'm also talking about that Farzana. Um, so I've actually heard people get um, some pretty positive results from applying directly on the LinkedIn job section. Um, but I, again, I think, multi, you know, multi-prong approach, uh, you know, getting connected, making sure you're applying if that's where it's listed, right? Um, I always think you need to cross-reference, does that exist here? Does that exist there? Is there someone who works at that company who can kind of give my um, application a little bit more visibility? But I have heard some pretty positive things about the LinkedIn jobs. Yeah, and always just check the company website too, because as you mentioned, LinkedIn applying is so easy that it's almost like the lazy approach, right? Where if you actually go on their website and it's listed there and you can apply, it shows that you took that extra step to go to their website versus LinkedIn, where you can just click apply, 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 apply. Um, and someone said connections are good question mark like I could I should be connecting with my neighbors who I found on LinkedIn or that won't really help. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to touch on that more, but I'll just quickly say um, so, for example, if I connect with Gia right who obviously I'm connected with, but if I didn't know her um, and I connected with her now everyone that she's connected with which let's say she's connected with a thousand people on LinkedIn all of those 1000 people are now considered a second degree connection to me just because I know Gia. So if maybe one of those 1000 people and I check out her profile, I'm like, Ooh, she's friends with this person who works at HBO. I'd love to work at HBO. I can message Gia being like, Hey Gia, I noticed you are connected with Bob from HBO. Would you mind introducing us? And she'd say, sure. Um, and that way, right, my network just expanded just by one person. I now have access basically to her network because we're connected. So the more, if you think about it, if you're connected to just five people, right, think about all those connections. So the, you really should expand as much as possible. Now, that's not to say if some creepo guy like friends you who you have no idea with and he looks just like super sketch, no. But if it's your neighbor, like you mentioned, yeah, why not? And your neighbor knows you, you grew up with them potentially, right? Why not use their network? And it's a really great way to kind of look through their Rolodex of who they're connected with. You're just expanding. All right, just because we're short on time, I'm going to move to the next slide. Um, so what I meant about the question was, what do I mean by being active? So on LinkedIn, there's status updates. So you could say, um, maybe you completed an internship 
or you went to a conference, right? You could post a picture from the internship or conference and say, thank you so much to blah, blah, blah company and tagging, you know, my boss A, boss B, boss C for such a rewarding experience. I'm sure you guys have seen that on LinkedIn. Um, or maybe you are uh, publishing an academic paper or maybe you got a job or you're looking for a job and want to be connected. You could literally say, I would love to work in uh, television. Does anyone know someone in television that they could connect me with? It means so much to me, right? Um, so engaging is like posting for yourself as well as reposting other people's articles, commenting on other people's statuses and posts. It just helps, LinkedIn rewards that kind of behavior. Um, it's kind of similar to like TikTok and Instagram. So it's just really important. Um, and on LinkedIn, you can publish like an article on LinkedIn. It's really, really easy. Um, I actually super, 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 super recommend it. Um, so for example, if you are really into, I don't know, um, TV, and maybe you don't have any internships yet in the TV space, right? It's a really good idea to write blog content about TV. Like maybe you're really into reality TV. So you, maybe you write funny, even funny articles about The Bachelor or you write about the Kardashians, it doesn't matter. It just shows that you take the time to write about it and that they can see that you can write and that you actually care about this and no one's like making you do it, right? Like an internship, they're asking you to do these projects, but the fact that you're writing this blog content on your own time speaks volumes. Um, and I would say always think industry specific, right? So Jamie is, is talking about someone who wants to go into uh, entertainment, media, or television. If your your thing is healthcare, then maybe talking about, you know, something related to that. Of course, you don't want to, you know, leave your wheelhouse. It really has to something that be something that um, speaks to your reputation in that space as an expert or that you're building up to be an expert in that space. Totally. Um, now, obviously the IRL in real life is kind of put on hold uh, due to COVID, but when the world reopens, networking events are really great. Um, there's meetup.com. Um, Macaulay, us, have a lot of events that are open. Almost all of them are open to CUNY. We're even doing an event um, next month about consulting, for example, if anyone's interested in consulting, excuse me, we're having a networking event where the employers are also bringing entry level jobs or internships. So we always try to provide opportunities for you guys to meet these companies. So for example, if, I don't know if you guys are familiar with consulting, one big, big, big company that's coming as an example is McKinsey, right? And they are huge, but really popular. And the fact that we have our events and they're so intimate it's the most amazing opportunity for you to develop that connection versus just applying online to McKinsey. You will have such an advantage. So we really encourage you to attend these networking events. They're not technically IRL, but they're virtual and you can in real life meet them through the computer. So I highly, 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 highly recommend. You can find um, our webs, our events. If you just go to Macaulay's website, um, it's literally on the landing page and you can sign up. Um, we have a bunch of more events coming up this spring. So that's just one example. Um, informational interviews we talked about earlier, um, but I'll just touch on it a little bit. It basically just means you're connecting with someone, whether it's the LinkedIn or maybe it's your neighbor's sister who works at HBO um, and not asking them for a job, but saying, what is it like to work at HBO? What is success in a position like is a PA look like? What are Thing, what are they looking for? What is the day in the life? What is the culture? So that you get a better understanding of the company and the industry. And then you've built a connection because people love talking about themselves. Um, so by doing that, you're building that organic relationship. And over time, those people typically will be your advocate as we talked about earlier. So when you submit your application for HBO, you can call up that woman, your neighbor's sister's friend, and say, hey, I saw an entry level job at HBO. Would you mind, you know, putting a good word for me? And she's spoken to you a few times, so why wouldn't she? Um, so that's really important. Um, clubs on campus, again, we're not in campus, but clubs are still active. Those are really great places to meet both professionals and students that have similar interests and your peers are your network too. Um, I know from other people in my life, they've gotten jobs from their friends in college um, and that kickstarted their career. Um, and then volunteering, I can't tell you how many times I've met people at volunteering events that have asked for advice from me. I like, for example, did um, volunteering at the Bowery Mission, which is a food kitchen, and they were asking me for career advice while I was there and I was happy to help. Um, so you never know who you'll meet and you could meet someone. I keep using this example, but like HBO, because who doesn't love HBO? 
um, questions? I know I'm talking fast it's just because we're short on time so far. Okay. Um, so for those Macaulay students, um, and someone asked earlier, I'm reaching out to a bunch of Macaulay students, is that what I should be doing? Yes, but being your Macaulay student, you get double the fun. So you have the Macaulay population and alumni and the Baruchs or the Queens or the Staten Islands or the John Jays of the world, right? So you have double the resources and double the alumni. That is huge and like unheard of. So not only whoever said that earlier, not only should you be reaching out to Macaulay people, but you should also be reaching to alumni of your home campus. It's double. So how do we do this? So if you are, you can do this now or later, the pages actually looks a little bit different. I apologize. So if you go to the Macaulay page and make sure you pick school, not company, it should be the orange logo like this. Um, on the left, it'll say, you know what? I'm actually just gonna do this. Um, so this is my profile. If you go to Macaulay, this one, oh, sorry, you do wanna go to the one that says company. Um, so the page will look like this. And then you'll see here, it says alumni. So again, I'm gonna use that same, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use a different example. So let's say I really wanna work at Google. So puts it here, there's 471 alumni. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're still at Google, but they probably worked at Google at some point. So this person, I'll just open up his profile. I'll open up this profile. I'll open up this one, I'm just picking randomly three. So you can see this guy works at Google as Global Partnerships. And let's see, he graduated in 05. This person, um, is also in partnerships and news and publishing at Google. And he was also at Facebook um, and he graduated. I don't know if it says, it doesn't, but it says he went to Macaulay here. Um, then this guy works at Google as well, Macaulay. He's a software engineer and see, here's his little summary. This is things that he has reposted that he's done. This is activity where he commented on things or reshared things. He doesn't have the bullets, but We'll forgive him, uh, but he is at Google. He did CUNY Tech Breck. He's worked at Facebook um, and he actually just graduated. So as you can see, it was super easy for me to just pull up and you could do multiple things. So I could do Google and software engineer too, if you wanna make it even more narrow. Um, and that didn't work for some reason, but you guys get the gist. Um, so, Oops. And when you reach out, make sure that you personalize it. I don't know if you're going to speak about that, Jamie. Um, I can't remember. I don't think I do, but um, if you want to talk on it or I can go for it. Yeah. When you reach out, so you find these people, right? What do you do next? You reach out, you let them write them a, a message or try to connect with them. So in mail is a paid service. So what I usually recommend is ask to connect with that person and it'll mention add a note on there. No, um, I'll add pull that up and say, you know, hi, so-and-so, I saw that you're a Macaulay graduate. I'm also a Macaulay graduate, um, a Macaulay student. I'm really interested to see if you would have a few minutes available to talk to me about, you know, your software engineering experience at Google um, and, and give me some perspective on that. It could be a very simple ask, right? That's the call to action. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th this, is, this is what I wanna connect about, right? Um, and make it short because no one ever reads more than that. You don't want to send them like a paragraph and paragraph of it. I also, I believe um, there's character limits on there that is. note that you over. So yeah. here's an example. So I just found this random girl. I click connect. And then what you mentioned, add a note. And I have 300 characters. Um, what I typically would like to say, you would say, hi, Camille. My name is Jamie. I would say like, what what is our connection, right? So she used to be, or maybe she is a Macaulay student and I work at Macaulay. Then I would say why I'm reaching out. And then I would say, you know, would love to chat in the next week or two to learn more. Maybe she's at LinkedIn, right? Learn more about your experience at LinkedIn. 
it's really important, I will say, to have, again, a call to action, right? This is the call to action that I want her to respond about chatting um, about LinkedIn. And it's also important to put a time frame. I like to say the next week or two. Um, if you say soon, soon can be tomorrow or it could be three years from now. People like to have some sort of a framework. So you introduce yourself, what's your connection, why you're reaching out, and then putting a call to action. So I am going to cancel Are it. You? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I, I rose my hand, but I don't think it's working. I, I no, I just can't see anything. So. So I was just asking about what you just did. Like, uh, are you supposed to use LinkedIn on your computer? Because when I requested a girl just yes, now, yes, the... yes, 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 yes. I was going to get to that. Do oh, okay. not friend people on your phone because it does not give you the option to add a note. You can only do it on the computer. If, and there's some accounts, you won't even see this connect button. If you click more, it usually will say connect here as well, by the way, if you don't see it there. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Um, but yeah, don't use your phone. Um, okay, so this was the screenshot. So this is an example. Okay. Oh, so I did talk about it, Gia. So always add a note. Don't just click to connect. Um, and as mentioned, these are messages are now actually up to 300. Um, informational interviews we talked about. Um, and it's just a really great thing to do. It's the most organic version of networking. And as I mentioned, people love to talk about themselves, but please, please, please do not say to them, hey, I saw you work at HBO. I'm applying for this job. Can you get me the job? No, they don't know you. They don't, it, that's putting their reputation on the line. It's not about getting you the job in that moment. It's about building this relationship with them. Um, and then what this is, and again, you'll get this PDF, but if, or you could just Google it on um, the career blog. If you just type in Macaulay career blog, um, you'll find the informational interview blog there, as well as a bunch of other resources. We have ones about LinkedIn um, and about networking as well there. All right, tip time. So oh, we have time for one question. Someone sure, put in the yeah, chat. I, yeah, because I can, I can okay. use another 20. Um, so she said, I tried to use the Macaulay page to search up people based on their affiliation with an organization, but everyone is only listed as LinkedIn member and I can't click on the profile. Yep. So that is LinkedIn's way of saying you don't hang out at LinkedIn enough. It's like they're saying you can't sit with us. Um, what the, the tips I'm about to show you will actually help navigate that issue um, but that's literally what it is. I see it all the time with students. They'll be, I will Google a name and I'll be able to see it. I'm on LinkedIn literally every day and I post and I react and you know I probably spend, oh God, I don't even know how much time, but a lot um, where I'm assuming whoever asked the question, maybe it's your first time or maybe you only go once in a blue moon, just use it a lot and it, LinkedIn will reward you. And also with that, create more, add more connections. Um, LinkedIn has this thing where once you hit 500, it'll just say 500 plus. You really should just connect, 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 connect with your classmates, connect with your teachers, connect with your family, connect with your coworkers, like connect, connect, connect. Does that answer your question? Um, I would add, just don't connect with anybody because they could actually report you if you don't have a real connection with that person. Um, I get these kind of connections all the time because I think I have probably way too many connections on there. And so um, folks will try to add me on there. And if I don't know who you are and why you're connecting, like there's no clear path. We're not alumni of the same institution or we've never worked together, like people can report you that is an option on there. So make sure that you're connecting with real people and that when you're connecting with folks that you're writing um, that add note section, sorry. Exactly. All right, so this is, I don't remember who asked that question just now about the LinkedIn member, but you're gonna love me in about two seconds. So sneaky little trick, cool. So Macaulay has two groups. There is the student group. So if you're still an undergrad and an alumni group, join these groups. Why? By being in the same group as someone else, you can not only see their profile, but you can message them a message as long as you want, like an email. 
Um, so it's really, really good. So for example, I've seen people that are like really big cheeses, if you will. And the best way for me to actually even connect with them is look at their groups that they're in. And if it's something that's somewhat relevant to what I'm trying to do, I'll ask to join that group because usually they're private. And if I get in, then I can go back and message that person being like, Hey, I noticed you were in the Macaulay group. How funny is that? Would love to talk to you about um, Google and da, 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 da. So groups are a really, really, really great way to um, message people and develop connections. So groups you can find in multiple ways. The two big ways that I would recommend is either when you're looking at people, see what groups they're a part of. Um, and that's all the way at the bottom of their profile typically. Um, it's under interests. Usually it's um, companies, schools, and interests. I believe, no, it's companies and um, groups. And then the other way is you can literally just go on LinkedIn, the search bar and type in software engineering group, and then it'll say groups. And then you click that and then it'll give you a bunch of different groups within software engineering as an example. Questions? Okay. Someone else asked um, if they don't want, you know, their boss to see that they're applying for a job. There's this feature um, in your settings. It's called open candidates. And it's a secret little switch that tells recruiters, because remember I told you they have a different type of platform that you're seeking for a job, but it'll hide it from your current employer or any recruiter affiliated with said company. Um, however, I will be advise you to be careful um, because so for example, if you're applying, if you have this happen and then maybe the recruiter at your company is friends also with one of your friends and they could see it, right? Cause it's only if someone in their profile is listed at X company. Um, so it works, but you just gotta be extra careful. Um, but I will say those recruiters, it says that they'll get twice as many messages from those relevant recruiters. So it is a really good um, toolkit. Um, but again, if I'll send this out and you can always click here, but if you just put an open candidate on Google search for your LinkedIn, it'll be pretty easy. References. So I want to, I want you to just write yes or no in the chat. And if Gia, you could read them out, how many of you when buying something on Amazon, make a decision about it by looking at the reviews that it gets? Just write yes or no. Yes, yes. I make decision because of the reviews. <laughs> yes, thousand percent. <laughs> right? What are people saying? Are they saying yes or no? They're saying yes, a thousand percent. Awesome. Oh, I thought that was you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I know this is kind of a weird way of explaining it, but you are a brand when you're on LinkedIn, right? You're selling your skill sets, your talents, your interests, right? Aren't you more likely to buy the product on Amazon or be invested in that person on LinkedIn if they have recommendations or references or reviews, right? So your profile is information that you've put in, right? You said, I did this at this job. I did that at that job. But at the bottom of a profile, you can also have recommendations and those live there forever. Um, and you can also give recommendations. So these are two that I've gotten in the past from a while ago. Um, and it kind of showcases to whoever is looking at my profile, not only my work ethic, but honestly, in this particular example, like my personality, right? And typically that is what you'll see in other people's recommendations. I know, for example, if I look at someone and they have a lot of recommendations saying, oh, they're fast thinkers, they are organized, they, uh, you know, can manage on their own, blah, blah, blah. Like that speaks so many volumes that not only are they those characteristics, but that that employer took the time to write the review. And it's a nice thing to do to give one as well. Um, so definitely, definitely recommend if you can get references from teachers, from past employers. Um, you don't want to get one from your classmate. You really want it to be someone that you worked with like for or a teacher. Um, and just note that they have to have a LinkedIn to give you a recommendation. It can't just be some random person through email. Um, save job searches. So again, can you say yes or no? 
How many of you Google throughout, let's say weeks and months, the same thing for a job and you keep seeing the same jobs and it's so annoying and you're like, ugh, why can't I just see new jobs every time, right? Cause you're just seeing the same thing over and over and over again. So if you see that a lot, write yes. And if you don't, then right now. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Right? So again, LinkedIn has this really cool feature because they know the struggle is real. And what you can do is type in the job you're looking for. So let's say it's a software engineer and you want to stay in New York. You can save this job search by turning the alert on and you can do multiple. And then it'll ask you how frequent do you want these alerts? So if some company posts a new job under these parameters of software engineer in New York, you will get notified so that it kind of takes the work out of it for you in terms of having to revisit every day to see, oh, is something else new up? Oh, uh, LinkedIn does that for you. Now, again, that's not to say every job in the whole world of software engineering in New York is gonna be on LinkedIn. No, because it is expensive to list a job on LinkedIn um, because it is such a great platform, but it definitely is something to make your life a little bit easier so that you're not checking every day. You can just set an alert. So it's where this little star is. There's not normally a star. I put that little star. Um, okay. And then customizing your URL. So my URL on LinkedIn says, you know, linkedin.com and then my name. A lot of the time I will see profiles that are ill <laughs> and say LinkedIn, Jamie Rude, and then 3952, blah, 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 blah. And it's not very clean. And if you want to put this link on your resume, it's much cleaner to not have all these random numbers and characters. So the way you do that is if I go back to my profile, you'll see this button, edit public profile. And you see that I already have my name, Jamie Rudin. Um, but if it said da, 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 I would just delete that and then just save. And that's it. So very quickly, Farzana made another really great uh, comment in the chat. And she said, you can also set an alert for companies too. Yep, thank you for that, absolutely. Um, all righty. So in the chat, um, and Gia, if you don't mind reading or if someone wants to talk, what are the three LinkedIn steps you need to take next? And everyone's at different places, right, at their profile. So I'd love to hear what are your next three steps from what we've talked about? Create a profile, <laughs> Add a summary. connect with more people, mm -hmm. connect with Macaulay alumni, mm -hmm. upload a professional picture and a summary, mm -hmm. headers, connect with people, add more people, edit my headline and connect with Macaulay alumni. I have to make my profile more wordy in description slash summary uh, will be uh, uh, Farzana, what do you mean? Will be emailed the slides, right? Oh, yes, you'll be emailed the slides. Um, remake a profile the right way. Upload a picture and connect with more people. Um, I wasn't finished, but create a headline, upload a photo, and join Macaulay groups. Oh, yes, that's a great point. Um, there is the LinkedIn alumni group, if you're an alum, alumni network group. And there's also the um, Macaulay student network group. Yep. And we usually post a lot of jobs on there. So jobs that we either get that are like short turnaround or that we really want to highlight, we also post on that feed. So please do join it. Yep. Um, you're very welcome. Uh, put a profile pic, upload summary, connect with more people. Uh, connect with more people. Join the Macaulay group. Upload <laughs> profile. Good. So it seems like you guys have gotten the message on what to do, which I love. Um, uh, Marie, Marie Claire has made a announcement that if anyone would like to add her to go ahead. Oh, nice. That's great. Um, so if we have any questions, I'll open the floor. Um, but before I take this down, um, this is me. Um, and if you have any questions about what we talked about um, or anything career related, um, feel free to shoot me an email. This is my email. Um, again, you'll get this uh, PowerPoint. So if you don't get it, but there it is. Um, so I am just going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm also going to add in the chat 
a little survey, if you don't mind filling out while I answer some more questions um, for you guys, because we have another seven minutes. So boom. Um, so let me know, shoot away. And if you don't have a question, I'll ask you all a question. What is something that you learned from this workshop um, that, just hold on, sorry. Just to confirm these notes will be sent to us. Yep, not what I've said per se, but the PowerPoint. And then I'm recording um, this conversation. So everything genius that G and I said, you can re-listen to us. Yeah, absolutely. Here's my email. Yep, I'll send out the PowerPoint. Absolutely. Please, please, please fill out the survey. Um, but yeah, what is something that you've learned from this presentation that you didn't know before? Uh, for me, I feel like I've been like, LinkedIn has kind of been like a source of anxiety for me because I've been like looking at it constantly, but like, I don't really know how to fix it because I'm not, I'm at the stage where like, I don't really have any experience, but like you need to have experience to get more experience. So I'm like really stuck. But I think that I like through this, I kind of feel like I know how to like at least brush up my profile and at least try to put like myself out there and to be able to kind of like start engaging more. And I'm going to start, I think, like actively um, like engaging. So maybe like resharing posts and things like that in order to just get my name out. Absolutely. And if you ever need um, more things to fill up your uh, account, I just posted the link for the career blog. Um, and if you're interested in writing something, you can email me and we can talk about a topic. And then on your LinkedIn, you could write Macaulay Honors College author for career blog and then post all the different blogs that you write as another easy way um, to just add something to your LinkedIn. You can add clubs, organizations, volunteer opportunities. Um, I love that people are sharing their LinkedIn's in the chat. Keep them coming. Um, anyone else learn something that they didn't expect to learn? If I could add to her comment, um, sure. I would say don't feel, don't feel overwhelmed. It could be very overwhelming. Take it one step at a time. Um, I, I love breaking things down into steps. So first step is just create the profile, right? Like you don't have to go so hard and post things all the time and do all of that. I mean, these are good things to know and keep in the back of your mind. Um, but you know, don't let it overwhelm you just take it a little bit, a uh, step at a time as you get, you know, more seasoned in your career and your academic um, career as well. You're, there are things that will fill up that space. Um, you'll get more used to, and then you'll also see how other people are using LinkedIn. I think that's the greatest part about LinkedIn, honestly, is that it demystifies all this stuff, right? Like you meet someone and you go, wow, they must have had like a gajillion years of experience in this area. And it just goes to show you like, oh, that person didn't have that much. So just, you know, just for this time being observe, right? Watch how other people are using it. What kind of things are they posting? You know, does that work for you? Is that something that you would want to do? You know, um, so just try not to be overwhelmed by the whole process. Thank you. <laughs> I wrote, um, I actually didn't know that there were so many parts to a LinkedIn account. That is right, Rachel. It is an awesome platform. Again, they should be paying me. <laughs> Anyone else want to say something that they learned today? They should pay you. Agree, Marie Claire. Maybe I'll, I'll have a sign-up sheet for you guys and you guys can all like protest to get me paid. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. We'll endorse you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. No, like uh, I honestly always wondered, like my sister has, um, her LinkedIn looks so much different than mine because she actually uses it. And I was like, well, who taught her this? Like, but now I know. <laughs> she was our intern. Yeah, she was your intern, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I always would poke her and be like, did you know LinkedIn could do this? And I helped her with her resume. And as a reference, guys, if you are a Macaulay student, you can make an appointment with either myself or Gia and you can work on LinkedIn, you can work on your resume, your cover letter, mock interview, job search strategies, like anything career related, you name it. I even have people write like 
how do I write a thank you note? So really we run the gambit. Were you gonna say something, Marie Claire? No, I wasn't gonna say anything else, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions, guys? All right, well, if you do have questions, always feel free to email us. Definitely sign up um, for the Macaulay group on LinkedIn for the student or which email, I'll, I'll put it back here again. Oh, thank you guys. I'm so glad you guys had fun. Um, that's my email. Please fill out the survey. Um, I'm so glad you guys had fun. Um, yay, this is so nice. You guys are so sweet. I'm gonna cry. Um, uh, again, thank you, thank you. I hope you guys are all staying safe and sane and binge watching good Netflix shows because that's what's been getting me through quarantine. Um, and it's been such a pleasure to talk to you guys and teach this workshop. So. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and hope to see you around. Bye guys, have a great day. Bye. Thank you, have a nice day. Bye.